Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is domestic violence and the African-American male. And we have to uh, talk about domestic violence and the African-American male. Uh, Gregory Taylor, who has been with us on a number of occasions, and now he would like to uh, give us some information relative to uh, domestic violence and the impact that it has upon African-American male. And let me uh, welcome you to the show this morning, uh, this, uh, uh, Gregory Taylor, uh, and tell you how delighted we are to have you here. I think our audience will remember you from some of the earlier shows in which you talked about a number of things. But today what we'd like to do is to deal with domestic violence and the impact of domestic violence on uh, the African-American male. But before we get into uh, talking about the uh, impact that domestic violence has upon African-American males, let's have you to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of your experiences. And then after this six minute segment is over, we'll have our commercial break, and then we'll come back and start dealing with this topic, impact of domestic violence on African-American males. Let's see if we can do it from that perspective. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Haney, I am a native of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I went to school at Selma University and I went to graduate school at Virginia Union, and I have a doctorate degree in research from the Future America Research Institute. And in the area of what I call a spillover from domestic violence, it's in the classroom. Uh, it has been said that the, some African-American teachers are known to ridicule, uh, emasculate, uh, use duress uh, on their young male uh, students. And this can discourage them when it comes to learning and I see these things are, as a connection, as somewhat of a spillover from uh, domestic violence. And also, myself personally, uh, I quit kindergarten. Uh, my mother allowed me to quit because I was afraid of the teacher's voice. Uh, I remember in the first grade, I was emasculated uh, by a little girl in the first grade class. And I didn't know what those things were, which I had experienced. So uh, I have a background where from 1961 to 1996, I worked my way through uh, the side effects from verbal abuse, which is an extension of domestic violence. And today, uh, from what I'm witnessing, a lot of men are not able to explain the imprint that the female voice has left in their memory. And this is an area where I believe if they can learn to explain those, it would do away with the, the violence. And so you're saying that uh, domestic violence has a, a, a tremendous impact upon the African-American male, but not the usual kind of impact that we would think. That you're talking about some kind of psychological thing that it does to him in reference to his psychic and et cetera. Is that uh, your point of view? Exactly. I, I will use the word imprint uh, in prenatal life, which I do a lot of research in, how the unborn child is imprinted by the environment and the uh, reaction to it is hidden in the child. And uh, in this area of imprint, some people would say freeze, uh, freeze the mind. Uh, I went through that and my best uh, explanation of my own life experience from 1961 to 1996, but it was a woman, uh, female, that further abused me, but it was also a female in the end that helped me work my way through it. So it is, uh, it's very, very special there for me in that area. And also, not to be one-sided here, uh, I can recall uh, uh, the, being the youngest son of the four girls, my mother had me in order to help my father get over the son that he lost. This made me very sensitive to women. You were aware of that? Yes, yeah. uh, yeah, she made me aware of that. And uh, so this uh, helped me to be sensitive to women concerns today. And all of these things, I believe, go into the uh, domestic violence today. Uh, the recent vote down of equal pay for women. Uh, I think uh, these things can be expressed, taken out other ways when they are not uh, responded to uh, as the way I think that they should. And uh, my mother said that she uh, had me to help my father get over the son that he lost. And so hearing both sides of the story, I like sided with her. And I know today that if a woman, when a woman becomes a mother, uh, uh, she doesn't have time to rest and she doesn't have time for herself. And I wanted this to be an opportunity for me to try to share both sides from the perspective of the woman as well as the perspective from the man in order to better the communication for all men, you know, whether African-American, European-American, 
uh, Caucasian, just whatever. You know. In other words, well, what we're saying uh, as we wind down this final, I mean, this first segment, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Taylor, mm -hmm. is that uh, the impact of domestic violence is not only on uh, the female, but it has a tremendous impact upon the male that many of us fail to recognize, and, 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 and so because of that, that's why you're here today. Is that what we're saying? Yes. And so let's let's take this first commercial okay. break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Gregory Taylor and his uh, information has to do with the impact of uh, domestic violence on African American males. And uh, Taylor, I think that uh, many of us, when we think in terms of domestic violence, we rarely think in terms of the impact that it has upon the male. We generally think in terms of the impact that it has upon the female. And I think that it has been well documented in terms of what it does to uh, the uh, African-American female. I think they uh, end up with bruises and splinters and et cetera in reference to it. But let's, let's uh, move on into the second segment okay. to uh, uh, develop uh, this idea that uh, African-American males are having a tremendous problem in terms of dealing with domestic violence. That is true, uh, Dr. Haney. Uh, I can recall when I was living in Atlanta, a lot of the men who went to domestic counseling with their wives or girlfriends, they always told me that it was very one-sided. The counselor only wanted to know what they said. And this inspired me uh, to write, started writing about this. Uh, editor, uh, publisher David Smith of the Atlanta Bulletin newspaper wrote my first piece about uh, domestic violence. He wanted to know why I felt it was necessary to share this. I said, from what I'm hearing, uh, there's no leverage for the man or platform anywhere for him to share the effect that it's having on him. And not only that, is his ability to be able to explain the effect that it has had on him. Because from speaking from personal experience, I did not know how to realize, how to recognize. To, or to articulate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, did not realize how to recognize, how to articulate it. Mm -hmm. And it was a lady, you know, this was in 1996 when the Olympics was in Atlanta. She never gave up on me. She didn't criticize me. You know, she just listened to me until I was able to uh, capture it and explain it. And that is something, as I think back over the years, the number of times that I had gone through those experiences, and my heart go out to men as well as women today. In the area, of, for instance, women, men are insensitive to women in the area of equal pay, you know. Uh, these things, and when she becomes a mother, she doesn't know have the time to rest or doesn't have time for herself. And then on the other side, there are men, men, uh, as I sometimes say, we are suffering from our father's lack of understanding of our mothers, you know. And today, we are having to find ways to work through this. I remember hearing Tom Brokoff saying at the uh, commencement at Vanderbilt uh, three years ago that the 21st century is the century of the woman. And I believe these things, and one humorous story is, Dr. Haney, when I was in Atlanta, I had to have ear surgery. And I had to think about this, you know. And I said, well, in the beginning in the Bible, the Lord put the man to sleep and created the woman. I said, so I'm going to find a woman to put me to sleep. <laughs> you know? Dude, it was just something about special for me to have a woman to put me to sleep to bring me back, that kind of thing. But I just tried to draw from both sides to create conversation, a uh, bridge, so that it can prevent the violence. And there, my research is being used in Atlanta to help men who are incarcerated. They are able to use it, and it's like a, what I call a mental map to identify sounds. And some of the women who have read it, they said that it's like a mirror to them to see uh, uh, how they sound on paper. Mm -hmm. And the men are able to take a look at it and point out at some point in their life where they had this type of experience. 
along those lines. You know, lines. oftentimes, and, and I'm reminded that oftentimes when we think about talk about the impact of uh, psychological things on uh, African male or female, we often go back into the institution of slavery, indicating that these ideas have been laid down quite early, and we simply grow into them and, and whatnot. But now, could you? When you think about uh, domestic violence, can you trace any of that back to an earlier part in, in, in which African males played a very, very uh, small part in reference to uh, the uh, family? And, and that, can you do that in reference to what you're doing now? And, and does uh, your research uh, lend itself to that? I, I think I can. And uh, there it brings to my mind the research of Dr. Nkosi Ajanaku mm -hmm. at the Future America Research Institute. This mm -hmm. is where my degree comes from. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Nkosi has done research showing how during slavery that it was important for the, uh, for the at a certain age, it was important for the uh, mother to make the son uh, dependent on the daughter. It was safer for him, for them to do that, if you're following what I'm saying. But in the long run, what I find today is that that can destroy the male at the same time of making him subservient, uh, not creating in him an independent spirit to, to think for himself. And then too, uh, Dr. Haney, uh, I was at a, a lecture the other day at Tennessee State University, and the, in the audience, uh, it was the speaker asked the question, how many men here who are single, uh, uh, grew up in homes of single parents, just the mother? And about 40 something hands went up. But I saw something that I had never seen before, and I think about President Obama, mm -hmm. and uh, I said to myself, these guys, will have a better understanding of their mothers as well as the women in their lives than sometimes those of us who come up where there was a mother and a father in the home. Because I had to learn from both the mother and the father and learn from both of them in order to strive to become whoever it is for me to be. And uh, that is the area what comes to mind when you share that. Share mm -hmm. that. And so this issue of domestic violence and, and the impact that it's having upon African-American males has a lasting impact upon them. Is that what we're saying? As, as you're indicating in your own experiences, yes. that it lasted for a long time, and unless they can meet it from a different psychological point of view or know some more information in terms of their feelings and et cetera, it's very difficult for them to get over uh, that impact. Is that what we're saying? I, exactly what I'm saying, because I can even personalize it here. The uh, little girl that verbally abused me in the first grade, uh, this is 1961. I kept up with her even after we left school, mm -hmm. you know, and I even dated her in the 12th grade. Mm -hmm. Even after she, we left school, I still kept up with her, and it was in 1984. I began to think and do research in these areas. I had, had been saved, and uh, so I called her and shared with her what I was doing. I told her that I was writing a book about the experiences that I had had, and immediately uh, she got angry. And the, the moment that she got angry, she said, you remind me of my husband. And so when she said that, I didn't respond the way I did as a lad. Mm -hmm. And she said, you're not the same person. I said, that's true. I said, I'm different. And I had gotten past that childhood verbal mm -hmm. abuse because at that age, I was like five and six. Those things had ingrown into my mind and I had to learn how to sort of dissect them or do as the, uh, what does the archeologist do? Mm. Take off layers, mm. layers by layer, mm. in order to identify what was left in there, you know? And so that is very true. And that was from a period from 1961, mm. and that was in 1984, and still hadn't worked my way through it. Very, very good. And of course, we're gonna take this second commercial break. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Gregory Taylor and the topic is the impact of domestic violence on the African-American 
Mayo, and he's given us quite a bit of information relative to his own uh, personal experiences in reference to violence and uh, unconcern. And let's uh, see if we, uh, Professor Taylor, can pick up where we left off dealing with uh, domestic violence and some of the things that you feel that you ought to make our audience aware of during yes. this last part of the uh, program. Thank you very much, Dr. Haney. Um, the, one of the three of the last words I'd like to mention are the words ridicule, uh, emasculate, and duress. Uh, it was in 1984 when I mentioned that I had realized I worked my way through the first abuse, like the layers. There was ridicule in the kindergarten, and then there was emasculation in 61, and later on I learned the word duress. And duress was where I grew up in the household. I was the youngest son on the four girls, mm -hmm. so I had to learn their sounds in order to survive. Mm -hmm. When they got tired of me, I'm knowing that uh, my mother did not want a son, and some of that was in their thinking too, mm -hmm. because it was quick for them to get tired of me. Mm -hmm. But what I was able to do was to learn their sounds mm -hmm. and learn that they were getting tired of waiting on me, taking care of me, this kind of thing, and they had lost a son before me. And the other thing here is I wanted to make sure that I highlighted the fact that from my time period of birth abuse from 1961 to 1996, there are men today who don't have an avenue or anywhere to go for anybody to listen to them, to give time, give them the ear. This lady gave me her ear in 1996, and I was able to get out all of those thoughts that I was thinking, the side effects of things, because people are quick to label you uh, as being mentally ill. Uh, the other thing is the man has, must learn how to uh, master the language mm -hmm. in order to articulate his thoughts or whatever is going on inside of him. And these, it's just very important because when I was in Atlanta, and I don't know if I said this earlier or not, but I actually uh, ran for the presidency of the National Council of Negro Women. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt even this was in 1992. Mm -hmm. It was that important for me to try to get on that type of situation to help better relationship between the male and female of our people. And I have also found the research has been tested internationally. Uh, men from other countries are able to identify with these things as well. And I've had some women to tell me they don't want me nowhere near their husband. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want this to be known. Because they think that they, that's a great secret and somehow you've uh, explored and found the secret and so they don't want you to tell everybody. Is that what we're that's saying? That's what, exactly mm -hmm. what I'm saying. And then there was another one who said that she believed that this research is going to open up a new door in the conversation of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. She was a professor at uh, Vanderbilt University here. And, uh, and I just would love to just see it flourish in a way where uh, and are using also the, 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 the game called the UnGame. Mm. It is designed to, designed to develop interpersonal communications mm. where people can share and feel safe, not ridicule, sarcasm, judgmental, and things of this nature. And I've been using the book Verbal Abuse by uh, P Patricia Evans. Mm. She's out of California, and she shared the statistics with me of the number of men come to her who have been verbally abused by women, and they don't have anywhere to go. And mm. the main thing is, from what I've seen from my personal experience, all these years that I suffered from being rid of, uh, misunderstood, you know, rejected, mm -hmm. uh, even in my family, you know, rejection is a common thing for me. Mm -hmm. I grew up with rejection. I was rejected when entered the world, you know, and uh, when I, when my mother, my birth followed the death of a child, and when my mother was in the eighth month of pregnancy with me, that was the tragedy that happened in uh, Mississippi, mm -hmm. with the Emmett Till tragedy. So I understand the imprint of these things, and being that in the month of April, this is the most uh, depressing month in the history of America. So many tragedies. Even as of this month, there have been about 11 that have taken mm -hmm. place just this month. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things come together. Uh, they have a way of having what they call historical traumas people can have, and all of these things have a way of adding up and affecting people's ability to articulate what it is they're trying to say, whatever they're trying to say they need to talk about. Now, you know, I think we've opened, and you've opened a very, very important issue here in terms of the impact of domestic violence on the uh, African-American male. Now, where would you go from here? I mean, how would uh, African-American males uh, Work their, work their way out of such a box that they're in. I know yours was a long, drawn-out process, and it took, took many years. Yes. But how would you suggest that uh, those individuals who feel that they have been uh, verbally abused, uh, uh, that nobody's concerned about them, and that they don't have uh, uh, a word to say around the homes that they are in now, how would you uh, suggest that they try to work their way out of 
some of the problems that you think that you've already identified in yourself? Well, I would welcome them, you know, to uh, get in touch with me. Uh, I recently had the opportunity to meet a gentleman at the YWCA named Self, and I shared with him what it is that I've been doing. And uh, I welcome them, you know, to get in touch with me and uh, can connect them with other men who uh, have gone through these experiences and they don't have anybody to really talk to about it, to, be, to uh, not to be made to feel wrong or feel like you shouldn't feel this way. And uh, one of the other things come to my mind here is the book, uh, How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. And in that book, uh, Dr. Haney, it says that a child may not know how to tell you how you made them feel, but they know how to feel. And this is what we're trying to do, help them to get their feelings out because a lot of this has happened when they're very young. And I was uh, attending the uh, uh, black educators here in the Opryland about two years ago, and it was stated there in the class why we can't read, mm -hmm. that the kids uh, uh, were ridiculed, some of the males were ridiculed. I was one of those. I grew up ashamed of reading. Even when my mother taught me to read the Bible, I discovered that she made me feel guilty when she couldn't pronounce a word. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, I discovered that she didn't know phonics, mm -hmm. and I didn't either, mm. you know, so it's just, this is a great opportunity for me to get something out that I've been carrying for a long time, and I believe it's going to help make relationship better between men and women when they can learn to discuss and get these things out. It, because oftentimes I think uh, you will admit that when we think in terms of domestic violence, it's almost a one-way street. It's, That's correct. Uh, the impact that it has upon the female without understanding the psychological impact that it has upon uh, the male. Exactly. And, which is, can be just as uh, disastrous in terms of what it does to him psychologically as at what it does to her physically.